Good evening, I'm Rob Brooks along with Bob James and tonight we have what is going to be probably the best Metro High School football game of 1999. Washington comes in, winners of three in a row. They now stand at three and two against the Kennedy Cougars and they have been on a roll. Now four and one after they're losing their first game to Cedar Falls. And Bob, really when we get into mid-October here, you have to start thinking about playoff implications. Well, indeed, as you mentioned, Kennedy's been on a roll and Washington's been playing good football too. And these are two teams that are very similar. If you look at the stats on down the line, almost everything is real similar. And as you said, should be the best game in the year or on the year in the Metro, definitely. Michael Milam, the star running back for the Washington Warriors is doubtful for tonight's game officially. But as we've taken a look at warm-ups, he's running pretty well. Well, Washington coach Paul James said yesterday that it would be a miraculous recovery if Milam was able to play, and uh, apparently it's miraculous because he looks like that ankle's feeling pretty good tonight. And on the Cougars' side of the ball, it's Derek Kielkoff. He's averaging 155 yards per game, and really when the Kennedy Cougars run the ball well, that's when they're playing at their best. Yes, that'll definitely be a key for them. We'll be able to see probably uh, definitely by the end of the first quarter, if that running game's working, Kennedy's got a real good shot of winning this ball game, of course. I think, Bob, really when this game comes down to a two explosive offensive, it's who's going to win the turnover battle and also play the best defense. Exactly. Like we said, uh, everything in the stats is pretty much the same, so it's going to be a, a game of key mistakes. Should be a lot of fun. Metro football tonight is brought to you by our great sponsors, Adcraft Printing, The Art Cellar, Boston Fish, Culver's Custard, and Chris Eden, Realtor. The kickoff is just moments away. We'll be back with the Warriors and the Cougars right after this. Cedar Rapids, a landlocked city, thousands of miles from any source of fresh seafood. Lucky for you, there's Boston Fish, where their seafood is as fresh as a cold sea breeze. May I take your order, please? That's because Boston Fish flies in only the freshest ocean delicacies from around the country, ready to be prepared in your home's favorite seafood dishes. You can also take advantage of their dine-in restaurant and enjoy a hearty meal in a truly coastal atmosphere. Boston Fish, it is so fresh, you'll swear you're on the high seas. The agony of back and neck pain can sometimes be too much to bear. No matter what position you're in, it's there, tormenting and irritating. Don't allow your suffering to continue. Call this number for relief. Call this number to stop the pain. Call Dr. Bradley Christensen at 396-6838 to end your pain today. No matter what you want them printed, for what, or for who, Adcraft Printing prints on almost anything, anytime, anywhere. They're locally owned and operated and committed to providing you the quality service you deserve. Plus, Adcraft does custom screen printing for your group or event. And don't forget them for your business cards, letterhead, and all your offset printing orders. So when you want your name to stand out above the rest, take it to Adcraft Printing, 309 Fifth Avenue Southeast. King's Material, the experts on retaining walls, also carry a wide variety of landscaping products to enhance the beauty of your home. Now you can give your home a distinctive look with decorative wall systems, paving brick, brick chips, and address stones. From simple flower beds to complete landscaping, King's Material provides durable design and elegance with a variety of styles and sizes to fit any budget. Call today or visit our website, King's Material, serving Eastern Iowa from three locations. Well, the first question will be whether Michael Milam will take the field or will it be Tony Simmering who filled in for Milam in last week's 35-7 win over Xavier, and he was just superb, running for 212 yards and three touchdowns. So, nonetheless, the Washington Warrior tailback situation is in good hands, but obviously you want to have the All-Stater in Milam, but it will be the Warriors kicking off. Mike Nelson will kick for the Warriors. These two teams have combined to win seven in a row. Derek Kielkoff is back deep and along with Ben Guerin for Kennedy. 
And we're set to go. Great crowd on hand tonight. And the ball is taken by Ben Jacobs, and he just pounces on it at the 18-yard line. Oh, that's so, one of those kicks that served its purpose. No return, obviously, when you field the ball on your knees in high school football. You can't go anywhere, although in the softball, sophomore game, kid caught a pass on his knees and then leapt into the end zone. But, of course, the officials are on to that. Kennedy has a pretty dangerous return team. So we'll see with Derek Kielkoff. Back of the eye formation, Phil Coonrod, the quarterback, first down and 10 at the 18. And here's a big hole for Kielkoff. He explodes past the 30, down to the 32-yard line before Lewis Oster, the 5'10", senior strong safety, brings him down. So Kielkoff gets off strong. Indeed, we talked about it in the open. Be interesting to see. Kennedy obviously was going to try and run the football in a big gain on the very first play from scrimmage right there. When the Cougars can run the football, that's when they're the most dangerous. Big offensive line was outstanding a week ago. Here's Kielkoff again, big hole around the right side. Gets out close to the 40-yard line to give him a gain of eight on the play. Michael Moran in the free safety position came up to make the first hit. Kennedy has the fourth-ranked offense in the Valley, averaging 362 yards, most of that coming on the ground. You'll see him run out of this formation continually tonight. Here's Kielkoff again. He gets out to the 43-yard line before big Nick Frino, 5'10 senior, defensive tackle, brings him down for the Warriors. Well, the Kennedy offense is doing it all on the ground so far. Three running plays and two first downs for Kielkoff, and that offensive line's doing a nice job opening some holes. And Bob, we have seen the Cougars all season long. It's always been run, run, run. Then they get into the play action, and that's really where it opens up because they do have some potent receivers on the outside. Brian Remp and Josh Zaruba are the leaders. And here's Coonrod firing the ball incomplete. Intended for Mark Malley out of the backfield. And Brian Johnson had the coverage that time for Washington. Had Johnson beat, actually, but the pass was a little too far in front of him. Wasn't able to reach out and grab it. Not an easy pass to make as you get a look at Don Knock. Fired up for this game. Really likes the way the Cougars have improved from week to week. If he goes back to the Cedar Falls game where Terrence Freeney ran for 310 yards, that kind of got under his skin a little bit. And there's been improvement every single week. Second down and 10. Pull back up the middle. Not much there. A nice job by the Washington Warrior defense. Maybe a yard, and that's going to bring up a key third down. Woody Benhart gets up a little slow. As Kellogg carried and Josh Coffey gets his first tackle. We're talking about Freeney. He does that to people almost every week with those yards. He is a heck of a back. Leading back in the valley. Definitely a Division I prospect. Coonrod fires the ball complete to Josh Zaruba. Good enough for a first down to the 41-yard line as Lewis Oster was beat on the play. So there's that play action that worked out well. Coonrod rolling out to his left, and this time connects. And a beautiful job that time by the Kennedy offensive line, too, picking up a couple of guys who were coming in on the quarterback as he tried to roll out to the left, and that just made the play work all the better. Yeah, you watch Coonrod here. He has his eye on Zaruba the entire way, ran a nice pattern, found himself wide open. Here's Derek Kielkoff. He slips and slides his way to the 37-yard line before Steve James, Rob Myers, bring him down. So nice sustained drive. Cougars now have picked up three first downs. This is exactly what Don Knock wanted to do, come out and pound the football and then get in and open up that play action pass. Second down and seven on the 38. Zaruba in motion. Here's the pitch to Kielkoff. Nothing there, and he is going to be sacked back at the 39-yard line. Charlie Donahue, along with Anthony Cook. 6'2", 225, 
nose tackle read that perfectly. And that was a beautiful job by the Washington defense. When Kielkoff got that ball on the pitch, it was a nice quick pitch. Looked like he was going to have running room around the right end, but the Washington defense filled that in in a hurry. That's a play that has worked well all season long because the blocking's been so outstanding, particularly on that right side. So now another third down. Can the Cougars convert again? Here's Coonrod on third and ten. Looks and fires the ball, and it's caught. Brian Remp gets the first down inside the 30. And what a play by Phil Coonrod. Felt the pressure from the backside and was able to complete it. And a great catch by Remp, too, as we're going to see on this replay. It looked like Coonrod, that's kind of play where you maybe throw an interception, and he very well may have, if not for the great catch by Remp. Good thing Remp is 6'4", 220, big target. <laughs> I'm not sure Phil even saw him. He just kind of threw it down the middle and picks up the fourth first down on this drive. Two conversions on third down. Now first and 10. Coonrod fires it down as Remp. He catches it. Touchdown, Cougars. What a beautiful pass. 29 yards. 29 yards on the play. Kennedy strikes quick. And the passing game surfaces for the Cougars. They've gotten that Washington defense into thinking short, 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 and run, 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 and then all of a sudden you hit them deep down the middle and six points for the Cougars. Here's Ben Guerin with the extra point. Make that Brad Fowler. He kicks it right through. And the Cougars start out with a 7 to nothing lead. And we'll be back right after this. Shakes and bacon. Hey, all you burger lovers. Shakes and bacon. Here's something real fresh. Shake, 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 real ice cream parlor shakes and fresh, juicy burgers. Nobody serves cheeseburgers like Culver's Bacon Butter Burger Deluxe with a real custard shake or malted on the side. Shakes and bacon. Culver's frozen custard. Whole lot of value going on. Ooh, shake. Unique, special, creative. Art Seller, known for art supplies and framing, also offers creative solutions to custom framing sports memorabilia and collectibles. Art Seller can help you preserve your memories and personal items in shadow boxes and unique displays. Bring in your photos, cards, posters, awards, medals, jerseys, or any keepsake, and the Art Seller will design a custom presentation that is one of a kind. Art Seller, your best choice for creative framing of sports memorabilia in downtown Cedar Rapids. That's exactly how Don Knock wanted to start this intra-city battle as the Cougars go on top quickly, 7 to nothing. About an 82-yard drive by the Cougars, and they just uh, did everything they wanted to on that drive. Tony Simmering back deep for the Warriors. Fowler to boot it away. This is Simmering at the 5. Big hole across the 25, and he's finally brought down by Brett Kellogg, who's heading to Iowa State to play for Dan McCartney next year. And that is a football program that is definitely on the rise. The Hawks can tell you that after the last couple of seasons. And that was a real nice kickoff for high school there, all the way to the four-yard line, however, kind of low. So a pretty good return as the Kennedy special teams players couldn't get down there real quick to cover it. Josh Stigger checks in as the Warrior quarterback. No Michael Milam in the backfield. First down and 10 for the Warriors. Here's Coffey. And there's nothing there for him as he tried the right side of the Kennedy Cougar defense. Kellogg and Mark Malley there to make the tackle. Well, we don't see Michael Milam yet. Josh Coffey and Tony Simmering, the split backs on second down and eight. Ball spotted at the 29. Here's Simmering. Tries to find some running room as he crosses the 30. Down to the 31. Hit first by Tim Hand, who was outstanding last week, and Brian Wadsworth. And we have a Washington Warrior down. Trainers out to check him. 
Warriors come into the ball game at three and two. Fifth ranked offense in the Valley. And the fourth ranked defense, but boy, they've got to be shocked at how easily the Kennedy Cougars sprinted down the field. And two big pass plays. Phil Coonrod to Remp, 29 yard touchdown. And really, the key thing was for the Cougars, two key third down conversions, including that incredible pass from Coonrod to Remp across the middle. Indeed, the uh, Washington defense did make some nice plays on that. Uh, on that drive, but uh, like you say, on third down, when Kennedy had to have it, they were able to get the job done. There you see Dale Blackcloud walking off under his own power. 5'10 junior. And the Warriors now, third and five on the 31. After two running plays, net five yards. Here's Steger to drop back. Fires out on the flat, and it is incomplete. Intended for Tony Simmering. And the coverage by Josh Zaruba that time. So the Kennedy defense, three and out against the uh, Washington offense. So we'll see if the uh, Washington defense, maybe with these few minutes on the sideline, has figured out how to stop the Cougar offense. Back to punt for the Warriors. Charlie Donahue. Off the side of his foot, takes a Cougar bounce and will drop at the 47 yard line. So great field position for the Kennedy Cougars. And really the Washington defense is gonna have to step up front and center. Indeed, everything seems to be going the Cougars way so far. That ball did not get very good coverage and the wind uh, obviously didn't have any factor on that as the flag is laying completely limp today. So the Cougars will start on the Warrior side of the field. What a beautiful night for football. Kielkoff on first down and 10, maybe a couple of yards. Warriors were tough up front, led by Anthony Cook and Kevin Burrell. Well, that's an encouraging sign for the Cougar defense. It's the best run stop so far after that first drive where almost every play, the Cougars, every time they went to Kielkoff, had good success. They're going to send a couple guys out wide here to make the uh, Warriors think about a pass anyway. Tom Shedek on the outside on second down and nine. Kielkoff once again for three yards. Steve Monstrad, the backup nose tackle. In on the tackle for the Warriors. And Derek Kielkoff came into this game with 779 yards rushing on 133 yard, 133 carries, averaging 156 yards per ball game. Really had an outstanding junior season. Was the Cougars main runner a year ago and most of the skill players are back and that's why Kennedy's enjoying so much success. Here's a play action pass. Coonrod fires over the head and incomplete as having a chance to catch that was Tom Shedek but I think it was intended for Brian Rempt. I would agree. Rob Myers down there on the coverage but it uh, as that play was developing, I couldn't help but think, well, the Warriors have this real well covered. Well, it goes over the head of the intended receiver and is almost caught further downfield. Nice play action by Phil Coonrod. Does a good job rolling out to his left. That's not easy. Ball looked to be overthrown, but the Warriors had that defense well. And the Cougars will punt it away. Kellogg's boot is a good one. The Warriors let it go, and it will be out of bounds at the 10-yard line. So the Warrior offense takes over with 5.48 left in the first quarter. Kennedy on top at 7 to nothing. Big game for both teams. Kennedy having won four in a row. The Warriors after a disappointing start as they played well against Iowa City West in the first game of the season and lost that ball game and then came back and unexpectedly lost to Jefferson. Since then, They've been on fire, winning three in a row. Here's Severin, big hole. Gets close to a first down on the sweep around the left side. Kellogg was there to wrap him up. So no Michael Milam yet. Looked good in pregame warmups, but this guy has risen to the occasion. Tony Simmering, a 5'8 senior, hadn't got much playing time, but when you look at it, 
A week ago, 212 yards, three touchdowns. And he has 273 yards to date. Gain of eight, second down and two. And Simmering is going to lose a couple on this play. Well, in the interior defensive line of the Cougars that time really sniffed that one out. Brian Wadsworth and Brent Nelson were both there to make the stop. And I heard one of the Washington coaches say before the game, Simmering is like a water bug. You got to get him with Velcro because he's slippery. And uh, he certainly wasn't on that play, but he's got very good speed and uh, quickness to go along with the speed. Josh Steggers had a good season throwing the football, completing over 50% of his passes. Third down and six for the Warriors. Here's the pitch, and Simmering gets the first down and a couple of more as he gets out close to the 20-yard line. Good quick pitch around the left side. Indeed, and it looked like that time if the uh, sideline would have been right there, Simmering might have been able to turn it upfield and take that one all the way, but the Cougars were able to shove him out of bounds and just allow him to get the first down. 429 left to go in the first quarter. Cougars on top, seven to nothing. The Warriors pick up their first, first down of the game. Ball spotted at the 21. Steger downfield. And the ball was thrown in the wrong direction, intended for Michael Moran. Moran cut inside. The ball was thrown out, so a little miscommunication on the pass play. And very luckily for Washington, that wasn't intercepted because obviously the receiver had no idea where the ball was. And thankfully, as far as the Warriors are concerned, neither did the defensive player. There was Phil Coonrod coming off the field, was there defensively. Jeff Burkus limped off for the Cougars, too. And we're going to have a walk-off against the Washington Warriors. Block below the knees. Ten-yard penalty takes it back to the 10. That'll bring up first down. Running play up the middle. Maybe four there for Simmering. Well, a whole host of Cougars there defensively, including Brett Kellogg and Josh Zaruba, who've been in on several plays already. Yeah, you look at this Kennedy defense. I mean, you have Remt, Nelson, Wadsworth, and Scott Knock up front, and then Hand, Malley, and Kellogg at the linebacker position. And Don Knock has to really like what he sees from that front seven. Kennedy taking care of the Jefferson Jayhawks, 27 to 14, a week ago. Here's Steger, a lot of running room. Turns the corner at the 40, dives for midfield, and the Warriors with a big play and a first down on a second and 17. It's amazing sometimes how these huge holes open up in the football field. It's a big field, and with only 11 players on each side, all kinds of running room that time for Josh Steger. Well, that fires up the Warrior offense, and we'll take another look at it. Steger already in the open field. Made a nice move to the outside at the 40-yard line. Did a nice job of using a block on the other side. Simmering across the 50 into Kennedy territory down to the 47-yard line. Tim Hand, along with Ben Guerin to wrap him up. So you have to be impressed with Tony Simmering and what he's been able to do filling in for Michael Milam. Tough he's, shoes to fill. Indeed, he's doing a real nice job so far and we have yet to see Milam and uh, he's just standing there with his hand on his hip over on the sideline showing no indication that he'll be coming into the ball game anytime soon. Rob Myers goes wide left. Pitch to Simmering, big hole up the middle. Gets the first down to the 39 yard line. Flag comes out late. It was near where the tackle was made. Looks like we're going to have a face mask penalty against the Cougars. Stand up and be counted. Here we go. Scott Knock and Kellogg in on the tackle. So everything going right for the Warriors after they had a penalty that took them back to the 10-yard line. Yeah, that uh, big play by Steger, that big long run, which obviously has been their biggest offensive play of the day, has changed the momentum. And that's exactly what they needed because it was a second and 17 play. 
They were looking at having to boot the ball away deep in their own territory. And now they've marched right down to the 26 yard line and have an opportunity to tie this game up trailing seven to nothing. First down and 10. Simmering dances outside. He's going to lose a yard. Kennedy defense too strong on that play. Ben Guerin leads the way. It seems strange to be looking at that side of the field. We play most of this quarter really on the Washington side of the football field. And now they've obviously been able to move over midfield and they're down in scoring territory as they near the red zone. Under two minutes left in the first quarter. Second down and 11. Moran comes wide to the right. I formation. Ball spotted at the 26. Steger drops back and fires complete to the 15 yard line. That was a beautiful play. Zaruba and Guerin were both there to make this stop for Kennedy, but not before a huge second and uh, what was it, about 12 yards to go, I guess, and they'll get the first down on that. Steve James picks up his first catch of the game, and they'll move the chains. Ball spotted at the 14. So a nice mixture on this drive by the Warriors, running with Simmering and then completing enough passes to move into inside the 15-yard line. And Steger very calmly laid that ball right in there. Moran wide right, first down and 10, simmering. Off left tackle, turns the corner, gets close to the end zone, be knocked out of bounds at the four yard line. Tony Simmering. Ben Jacobs saved the touchdown that time, but it's gonna be another first down. It'll be first and goal from about the two or three yard line here for Washington. We thought this could be an offensive game, and it is certainly looking that way right now. It's been big plays on first down. Ball spotted at the three, simmering, hammered at the three-yard line. Cougar defense stiffens. Hand in there along with Brent Nelson. This is where a lot of teams have trouble getting it in the end zone, and. You wonder if Washington might miss Milam a little bit here. He's obviously quite a bit bigger than Simmering, but Simmering certainly has all the moves too, and they'll go with a triple backfield set now. On second down and goal, Simmering tries it again. Maybe it gets down to the two yard line. No running room there at all, as Kennedy closed it hard with Brian Wadsworth. Terrific play, third down. Wonder if now Wash will go to the air, maybe try something around the end because it's been tough going in the middle down here. Have they set up the play action? Yes, sir. We'll see what the Warriors will do on third down. 30 seconds left to go in the quarter. Cougars on top, seven to nothing. Here's the pitch. Simmering finds a hole and creeps into the end zone. The Warriors are on the scoreboard. Again, simmering in there one way or the other, and the pitch play opened up right off right tackle, and the Warriors pull within a point. About this is an interesting story here. Michael Hersberger, a freshman kicker at 5'6, 130, has been added to the roster tonight, and he's going to attempt the extra point. The spot's clean, the ball's up. And it's right through, and we're knotted at seven. And he'll remember that for a long time. 24 seconds left to go in the quarter, and we'll be right back. Shakes and bacon. Hey, all you burger lovers. Shakes and bacon. Here's something real fresh. Shake, 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 real ice cream parlor shakes and fresh, juicy burgers. Nobody serves cheeseburgers like Culver's Bacon Butter Burger Deluxe with a real custard shake or malted on the side. Shakes and bacon. Culver's Frozen Custard. Whole lot of value going on. Ooh, shake. Unique, special, creative. Art Seller, known for art supplies and framing, also offers creative solutions to custom framing sports memorabilia and collectibles. Art Seller can help you preserve your memories and personal items in shadow boxes and unique displays. Bring in your photos, cards, posters, awards, medals, jerseys, or any keepsake, and the Art Seller will design a custom presentation that is one of a kind. 
Art Seller, your best choice for creative framing of sports memorabilia in downtown Cedar Rapids. Big hole for Derek Kielkoff on the kickoff out to the 35-yard line. He faked the reverse and then drove the ball to the 35. So Kennedy, once again, will have good field position. Kielkoff does it on special teams as well. Washington didn't really seem to be fooled by that reverse, but uh, he was able to certainly make some room on the near side and it was about one tackler away from breaking that for a touchdown. There's a big hole down the left sideline. Tom Shedak wide on the right side. Eye formation for the Cougars. First and 10 on the 35. Kielkoff, big hole across the 40 to the 44-yard line. And he's brought down by a good one-on-one -on -one tackle by Rob Myers. Kielkoff again was very close to breaking that one as well. As you said, Myers, a very nice job in the open field or otherwise. Kielkoff might have had another 10 or 20 or maybe even 55 yards. We told you it'd be good. It has been through one quarter. We're tied at seven. We'll be back on TCI TV 10. No matter what you want imprinted, for what or for who, Adcraft Printing prints on almost anything, anytime, anywhere. They're locally owned and operated and committed to providing you with the quality service you deserve. Plus, AdCraft does custom screen printing for your group or event. And don't forget them for your business cards, letterhead, and all your offset printing orders. So when you want your name to stand out above the rest, take it to AdCraft Printing, 309 Fifth Avenue Southeast. King's Material, the experts on retaining walls, also carry a wide variety of landscaping products to enhance the beauty of your home. Now you can give your home a distinctive look with decorative wall systems, paving brick, brick chips, and address stones. From simple flower beds to complete landscaping, King's Material provides durable design and elegance with a variety of styles and sizes to fit any budget. Call today or visit our website, King's Material, serving Eastern Iowa from three locations. Rob Brooks and Bob James back at Kingston Stadium is Phil Coonrod. Gets enough for a Cougar first down. Just underway in the second quarter. See, we're all knotted at seven. Both teams had long drives. The Warriors went 90 yards for their score. Here's Kielkoff exploding up the middle, and he's wrapped up at the 47-yard line. Great tackle. As Anthony Cook was in there, along with Blake Pickney. Kielkoff, not easy to bring down. You really have to get low and go at his legs if you try to tackle him around the shoulder pads. It's pretty difficult. Don Knock certainly has seen that all year. Second down and six. Coonrod drops back and completes the pass to Josh Zaruba. Not much of a gain about the 46 and that's something we haven't seen a whole lot from the Cougars is that short three-step drop and then firing it out usually we'll see it here here's Coonrod looks right out for Zaruba he makes the catch could not go anywhere and that's Michael Milam making the tackle so he is indeed in the game now that's strong safety our first look at Michael Milam Wearing number 32, and Kielkoff is met right at the line of scrimmage. Terrific play that time by Washington. Blake Pinckney made the stop. Anthony Cook there as well. So a third down, well, actually brings up fourth down. I was going to say third down, and Kennedy, of course, hadn't faced very many of those since that first drive. But Washington's going to get the ball back. So Michael Milam in the ball game defensively. The Cougars will punt it away with Brett Kellogg. Now, fake. And here's a fake. And moving toward the first down, it's going to depend on the spot. We'll see. I think he's a little bit short, it looks like, from the referee's marking on the near side, but it is hard to tell. They're going to certainly have to measure this. Well conceived play, and we'll see if it's good enough. And a very, very big surprise. I think it's safe to say Washington wasn't looking for that. Don Knock usually on the conservative side, as we'll see it again. The pitch to Drake Bush, 
Didn't have much running room as the Warriors read it well. Chris Reed is the guy who made the, the hit on the upper body of the ball carrier that really stopped his forward progress, and he did indeed stop him short. So the Warrior defense does the job and will have great field position on their own 42-yard line. So the gamble backfires for Kennedy. Well, we'll have to wait and see what happens here, but obviously Washington gets terrific field position, and uh, you wonder if, well, they switched ends on me. I was thinking maybe that had to do with the bad punt earlier, but that was Washington, actually, that had that punt that didn't go hardly anywhere. Simmering still in there. Josh Steger shuffles the deck at first down and 10. Here's the pitch, Simmering, great cut inside and spins to the 44-yard line. There was a hole there for a minute, but it closed quickly. Jesse Judd. That was a real nice play by Judd, too. He grabbed him up around the shoulder pads and the helmet and threw him to the ground. Interesting that Milam's playing on defense, but not on offense, but I guess you uh, stand a lot bigger chance of an ankle injury on offense, especially as a ball carrier. One thing with an ankle injury, you can usually go backward and forwards. It's tough to cut left to right, which you have to do as a running back. Second down and eight, simmering, nothing as he crosses the 45. Gets out to the 46-yard line, so the front seven as Josh Zaruba came up from the cornerback position to make the hit. Eight minutes, 55 seconds left to go in the second quarter. We're knotted at seven. Interesting, Josh Steger runs to the sidelines quite a bit. Talk to Paul James to get the play that the Warriors are going to run. Neil Carell, wide left, play action. Here's Steger, fires downfield. Carell dives after it at the 20, flags fly, and we're going to have pass interference on Steve Bream. And a very nice job by Brian Rempt, who put the pressure on Steger that time. And it certainly looks like pass interference against the defense. We'll see which way it goes. Yes, indeed. Here's Steger. Nice fake as he rolled out and then just got crushed as he released the ball. And Steve Breen kind of went after Neil Carell before the ball got there. Breen, the fastest player on the Kennedy defense. He's not easy to beat. He's run down a lot of players from behind to save touchdowns. Neil Carell enters the game and makes things happen for the Warriors. So the ball will be spotted at the 39-yard line. It'll be first and 10. High formation. Simmering to the 36. Not a lot of running room that time. Tim Hand, the first one to hit him. Tim Hand and uh, Brett Kellogg, a couple popular names to call on defense. Kellogg was also there. Washington is uh, doing this very quietly moving down the field, and certainly that Kennedy defensive pass interference penalty has helped out their cause after the fake punt by Kennedy. And Dale Blackcloud, who was injured earlier, is the usual left tackle for the Warriors, and he has been replaced. Steger, once again, throws it outside as the receiver, Michael Moran, went inside. So miscommunication between Steger and Moran for the second time. That's right, the second time where Moran has been going one direction and Steger has thrown the ball in the other. And luckily for Washington, both times, it's just dropped harmlessly to the field because that can be six points the other way in a hurry if you've got a defender in the area. So another important third down upcoming for the Warriors at third and nine, ball spotted at the 38-yard line, 7.52 left in the second quarter. And we're going to have a timeout on the field. The Warriors are going to talk things over, and we'll step aside with the Warriors and the Cougars nodded at 7. Gets there from the without tasting like. Ooh, wait. 
That's right. Boston Fish Market has the freshest seafood around because they fly it in directly from the coast. So whether it's lobster, fish, or shrimp, if it's from Boston Fish Market, it tastes like it was just caught out of the ocean. Boston Fish also has a dine-in restaurant where you can enjoy a hearty sit-down meal in a truly coastal atmosphere. So hop in your and drive to Boston Fish Market today. When you need quality printing done right and done fast, take it to AdCraft Printing, Cedar Rapids Best. They handle professional signage and banners for business and industrial use, plus custom labeling on just about anything. AdCraft also does business cards, letterhead, menus, any offset printing your business requires. In addition, they're locally owned and operated and committed to providing you with the exceptional service you know and deserve. So stop in and find out for yourself why so many people are using AdCraft Printing as their printer of choice. So the Washington Warriors averaging 347 yards of total offense per game. Try to keep this drive alive at third down and nine. Here's Steger, fires it, it's caught. Great catch by Michael Moran across the middle. That time they hooked up. Indeed, that was one of those times where they exactly we're thinking the same thing that time, and Steger delivered a beautiful pass right on the nose, right where it had to be. Perfect spy on Moran right there. A great basketball player made the catch. It's good enough for another Warrior first down, and they've done a good job in converting on third down. Indeed they have. The Kennedy defender was right there, but that pass by Steger, as I said, in the perfect spot. Moran comes wide left, first down and 10, ball spotted on the 22. Simmering, nowhere to go, flags come out, finally is dropped at the 25-yard line. Well, that's almost certainly going to be a hold on Kennedy that time. There's a whole huge grouping of players over there. Brent Nelson is the man to bring him down. Just nowhere for Simmering to go and will be holding. That's the call, and the Warriors will back it up. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know what the discussion. Well, I guess actually the play did lose several yards. Lost probably, what, seven yards on the play? Kennedy may just decide to take that, but they won't. They will accept the penalty. Brian Remp makes the call on the Cougar side of the ball. Brings it back to the 36. So it'll be first down and 20. Well, the last time the Warriors were in this position was their biggest play of the game. Yep, that big run by Steger earlier. Simmering in motion. He gets the ball and a couple of yards. Another flag comes from behind the play. As in pursuit, Ben Guerin makes the stop. Indeed, and that's probably going to be another one of those illegal blocks against Washington. Well, it's going to be holding, so same difference. It'll back him up another 10 yards. And the flag was thrown way away from the play. Yeah, and the flag was thrown kind of in the open field. The Warriors have been battling penalties all season. Really contributed to the loss to Jefferson. It was a high scoring game in week two at 33 to 26. Jayhawks won it and are playing very well. They've evened their record this week at three and three. Well, this will bring up first and 30 for Washington now, so they're going to have to do something through the air probably in order to get this first down, which is they need to get all the way to the 13-yard line to achieve that. So the ball back at the 44. Dual wide receivers to the left, eye formation, first down and 32. Steger drops back. How is that possible? <laughs> Moran can't come up with it. And another flag comes out. And uh, that might have been one of those uncatchable balls. Kennedy not at all happy with the call. Philip Coonrod had the coverage, and I think they're going to get him for pass interference. Talking to Dave Ernst there, who coaches the secondary. We'll get another look. Oh, boy. <laughs> it was catchable. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? He killed him. <laughs> Well, they're a lot closer to it than we are, <laughs> I guess. That doesn't matter. <laughs> well, Coonrod couldn't believe it, and now we know why. That's right. Well, that helps. That takes care of your first in 30, 32, whatever it was. 
Yeah, now we're back to first and 10 on the 29, and they run the ball with Simmering, and he finds a gap that is closed in a hurry at the 31-yard line. Terrific job, Steve Breen and many others there that time for Kennedy. Tim Hand in there as well, and he's just had a great first half. 5'10", 185-pound linebacker. Kennedy's really a physical football team up front. And that's the way they like to play. They like to kind of wear you down and beat you with strength and power up front. Washington hasn't had a lot of rock, luck running up the middle. Most of their yards for Simmering has come around the ends. Loss of two, second and 12. Here's Steger, drops back, has a wide open Neil Carell and overshoots him. Nobody within 10 yards a big Neil Carell. When he first threw that, I thought maybe he was looking for Moran again, and he turned the wrong direction. But as you said, he was wide open Carell that time. But Steger not able to make the connection. Six minutes left to go in the second quarter. Still seven to seven. And a huge third down play coming up. Third and 12. Ball at the 31. Split wide receivers out to the right. Here's Steger. Deep drop. Fires the ball out of bounds. The rush was too strong for the Kennedy Cougars. Looked like they were going to try to develop a street screen play. And Ben Guerin led the way. Mark Malley broke through there, too. And uh, I guess because he was able to get the ball out of bounds, they didn't call grounding on him because there certainly wasn't any receivers in the area. So turns out that the fake punt by Kennedy doesn't hurt him here unless they make you know, some kind of a mistake here on this. Actually, they're going to try a field goal, a 48-yarder. <laughs> well, they've got a new kicker just introduced tonight. Good heavens. <laughs> so it'll be Mike Hertzberger, the ninth grader on, and that's not pressure. <laughs> wow. I think that caught Kennedy by surprise. They thought something strange might be happening and decided to call a timeout, so... We're knotted at 7, 5.54 left in the second quarter, and we'll step aside. We'll be back with more on TCI TV 10. I got the end. It's where you live. What you will always think of is home, and it should look like your dreams. Make those dreams come true with help from the experts at King's Material. Imagine adding beauty and value to your home with the strength and durability of a King's Wall system. Or choose the contemporary design and dramatic shadows of Keystone. A retaining wall system from King's Material is the economical way to customize your home and make it stand out from the rest. Call King's Material today, serving Eastern Iowa from three locations. Unique, special, creative. Art Seller, known for art supplies and framing, also offers creative solutions to custom framing sports memorabilia and collectibles. Art Seller can help you preserve your memories and personal items in shadow boxes and unique displays. Bring in your photos, cards, posters, awards, medals, jerseys, or any keepsake, and the Art Seller will design a custom presentation that is one of a kind. Art Seller, your best choice for creative framing of sports memorabilia in downtown Cedar Rapids. Well, the boot is away and short. So the Warriors did try that long field goal of 48 yards by Michael Hersberger. It fell into the end zone, so Kennedy will take over. Well, Hersberger showed a real nice leg on that. It just landed a few yards shy of the goalpost, but obviously landing shy of the goalpost isn't going to get you any points. There you get a look at it. Wide to the left and short. First down and 10 for the Cougars at the 20. Kielkoff maybe a yard off left tackle. Anthony Cook from the nose tackle position makes the hit. Kind of a strange possession by the Washington Warriors. They got things going pretty well. Then penalties dropped them back. Then they were the beneficiary of that pass interference. It gave them first down, but credit. The Cougar defense with a big stop. Second down and nine. Coonrod rolls to his left. Lofts the ball down and out of bounds. Intended for Michael Milam on the sideline, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Sheedak was at least in the vicinity, but 
I think Coonrod was just trying to toss that one out of bounds. So Milam not in on this particular possession. He played strong safety on the previous series. So third down and nine. Keokoff for one yard and an incomplete pass. Zaruba wide to the right, and there is Anthony Cook for a sack of Phil Coonrod back at the 16-yard line. And he got through there in a hurry. Brian Johnson was there. If he wasn't going to get the sack, Johnson was. Nice job by the Washington defense that time in this game, which started off offensively, has turned defensive. Stunt on the inside, and Cook is there to meet Coonrod and just engulfs him. That's a 16-yard line. Looked like Coonrod might want to run the draw play there, but there was going to be nothing doing. So Brent Kellogg will boot it away. And the ball is taken by Rob Myers. And there's a hole. He could go down the sidelines. Rob Myers down to the five-yard line. What a terrific play by Kennedy. Ben Guerin got over there. It looked like that was six points for sure. And Guerin s saved the touchdown anyway, down at around the seven-yard line. There's the boot in the air. Kellogg to Rob Myers. Didn't hesitate and saw a seam on the outside and then turned it up and showed great speed on the right sideline before he was just knocked out of bounds at the five yard line. They'll officially mark it at the seven as the officials take time out. And it will be first down and goal. There's Don Knock, sure having a word with his special teams play. And now the Warriors will take time out. 4.23 left to go in the first half. The Cougars and the Warriors nodded at seven. So Bob, we thought both teams very proficient at offense coming in. This would be an explosive game. But so far, after two long drives in the first quarter, things have kind of settled in, and we've got a pretty good defensive battle going. Yes, we do. We've had a couple of big special teams plays now, which have uh, really figured into things, and it looks like it will here, too, with Washington down close to the end zone with plenty of time on the clock. Obviously, that's not the reason they called the timeout here. They've been having some uh, problems with the signals, perhaps. Steger, as you mentioned, has been uh, spending a lot of time over on the sideline, which reminds me of Prairie. I don't know if they're still doing that, but in years past, every single play, the quarterback would run off and get the uh, play call from Jelinek. They're still doing it. Big crowd on hand. Kennedy Cougar faithful coming out tonight. And the Washington Warriors with a great opportunity. The Rob Myers punt return gets him down to the seven yard line. First and goal. And here's the handoff simmering to the five to the four. And he's finally hit by Brett Kellogg. And nice job by Ben Guerin that time who forced him to go back inside. And that's probably what saved the touchdown because if he would have been able to get it out around the end, he might have been able to score. Simmering just comes in motion and takes the handoff, tries to cut it back, and dives forward. They'll give him a gain of three. It'll be second down, ball on the four. Only Simmering now will line up on the slot on the right side. And Josh Stagger doesn't like what he sees and calls another timeout. We'll step aside as well, 344, left to go in the first half. We're knotted at seven. you burger lovers. Shakes and bacon. Here's something real fresh. Shakes, shakes, real shakes, ice cream parlor shakes and fresh bread, juicy bread, burgers. Bread. Nobody serves cheeseburgers like Culver's Bacon Butter Burger Deluxe with a real custard shake or malted on the side. Shakes and bacon. Culver's frozen custard. Whole lot of value going on. Ooh, I didn't think it would ever feel good again after my car accident. But thanks to my chiropractor's effective and gentle treatment, my back and neck pain are now gone for good. He even accepted my insurance.
Because of chiropractic care, I feel great. And so can you. Don't live with pain. Call Dr. Christensen today at 396-6838. Second down and four as the Warriors line up. Simmering comes in motion, gets the fake. Here's the pass play, and it is caught. Touchdown, Warriors. That is going to be Josh Coffey in the end zone. And what a wonderful fake. I think the entire Cougar defense thought that Simmering had the football that time. Great fake. I thought he had it for a second around the left side. Josh Steger held on to it and then waited for Josh Coffey to free himself in the end zone and six points on the board for the Warriors. Try to tack on the extra point, Michael Herzberger. is one for one, missed a 48 yard field goal. Perfect. That's very nice looking PAT there. The Warriors go up at 14 to 7 with 3.38 left to go. And here is another look at the touchdown. Great fake. Simmering carried it out. And the nice thing there that Steger did was hold the ball and wait for Coffee to open up in the end zone. And he actually had two receivers down there that he could have thrown the football to. Number 85, Steve James, was also wide open in the end zone. So the Warriors, with their two touchdowns, both have resulted in a big play. You had the scramble by Josh Steger on a second and 17 to bring him into Kennedy territory. They scored a touchdown on that play, and then Rob Myers with the great punt return down to the seven yard line. Yeah, it's been one really long drive for the Warriors and one really short one, one 90 yarder and one seven yard drive now with the completion from Steger to Coffee to close it out. Mike Nelson to boot it away. The handoff, the fake to Keokov, and it is kept by Ben Garrett. He finds a hole. Slips a tackle at the 50. Still on his feet. Puts the ball on the turf, and the Warriors have it at the 20. Burrell made the hit, made him fumble, ball was loose, and the Washington Warriors come up with it. Oh, and that's a real shame, too, because that was one terrific run by Ben Guerin. The Warriors didn't appear to be fooled at all. They stayed right with the play defensively on the special teams, but he found the seam, and up the sideline he went, broke a few tackles, and then finally lost the football, and the Warriors recover, and that's a huge play for Washington. Keith Burrell recovered the fumble, but Kevin Burrell forced it. Kevin Burrell from behind made the strip, and Keith picked it up. So the Burrells give the Warriors the ball back, and there's nothing for Simmering as he is hit at the 20-yard line again by Brent Nelson. You know, Rob, we talked about in the open that this was probably going to be a game of key mistakes, and you go back to the pass interference call against Kennedy, now the fumble on special teams, and Washington has a seven-point lead, and they're a direct result of those plays. 2.55 left to go in the first half. Can the Warriors take advantage of another big play? Second and ten. Pro set by the Warriors. Steger drops back. Pass is incomplete. Diving for it is Michael Moran. He's trying to short down and out. Moran was open, but difficult pass to make because the angle isn't great. And Moran and Steger have had trouble communicating and hooking up in this ballgame. Zaruba had the coverage that time. This is a big play for Kennedy. If they can get Washington three and out after that fumble and get the football right back, they might be able to put some points on the board before we go into intermission. Moran split wide on the right side. There you get a look at the Kennedy defense, and they storm in there and sack Steger back at the 11-yard line. Brett Kellogg leads the way. 
That was a wonderful job. The entire Kennedy defensive front came through that time, and there was just nowhere.